It's the 16th of October 2015 and I'm on my walk around in Plymouth and I've just come across the unveiling of the memorial for Nelson who was captured and held in Plymouth in 1815 which is 200 years ago only when they used to have wooden boats. Uh, he was held in Plymouth Sound and then exiled to St Helena in the Caribbean. Poor Napoleon. The ships involved in, in uh, guarding him who saw the unfolding scenes. It became something of a headache for Lord Keith. He was commander-in-chief of the Channel Fleet at the time and he was kind of in charge of uh, associated events here in Plymouth. He wrote to, to Lord Melville in late July of 1815 the concourse of people to this place is beyond all imagination. The taverns are full and the sea is covered in boats. He wrote uh, rather more uh, thoughtfully to his daughter a day later, I am miserable with all the idle people in England coming to see this man. A dockyard, famously uh, and sadly, John Boynes drowned in the commotion. He was the only known casualty here in Plymouth Sound. But on one day, you know, it's said to be many thousands of people afloat. The Plymouth-born artist Sir John Locke Eastlake famously launched his artistic career on the back of two portraits he painted of Napoleon aboard the Bellerophon in Plymouth Sound. One uh, is a regular exhibit at the National Maritime Museum in London. A few generations down the line in 1874 when Plymouth opened its Victorian Guildhall, uh, there were commemorative windows, stained glass windows commissioned for that building. Many celebrating famous arrivals and departures and in 1874 one of those windows recalled the events of 1815 uh, featuring the Bellerophon, Napoleon and other members of his retinue. Of course, most of the Guildhall and certainly all those windows were destroyed in the Plymouth Blitz. In the 1960s there were moves again to put a plaque perhaps here on Madeira Road where we are today. Uh, a couple of occasions in the 1960s both of those um, proposals sadly bit the dust uh, and it's thanks to Monsieur Sivaril who resurrected the idea back in 2002 and we were both, uh, it was with me he resurrected it so we've aged a little bit since then but uh, here we are uh, and when better to actually deliver this project than in the bicentennial year uh, for those events that took place here back in 1815 and well done Monique and Alan Sibrel for, for delivering what you wanted uh, all those years ago. Napoleon in Plymouth Sound was chosen as a theme this year for Lord Mayor's Day Alain and, uh, and predecessor speakers have already mentioned the exhibition at the museum, which I think was hopefully very successful and very popular. Um, so it's appropriate now that we're finally here uh, at the unveiling of this permanent reminder of those events from 200 years ago. Right, the unveiling. Could I now ask my Lord Mayor to please take up his position on the pavement side of the, the stone, followed by fellow members of the unveiling party. You'll be familiar with some of them as they've spoken to you. Uh, they are also now joined by Paul Roo, who is the son of uh, uh, the French naval commander uh, who's here today. I think if I may now call upon Mrs. Melison Fitzsimmons, uh, sorry, Fitzsimons to step up here uh, and she will read the text of the plaque that uh, is on the memorial that you can read at your leisure later on, but I think it will have a more immediacy to hear it in. But, um... Napoleon, Emperor of the French, was detained on HMS Bellerophon in Plymouth Sound from the 26th of July to the 4th of August, 1815. Large crowds came to catch a glimpse of him. These two blocks of granite are from Dartmoor prison, where thousands of French prisoners were held captive during the Napoleonic Wars. Embedded is a volcanic stone from Longwood 
house when Napoleon died on May the 5th, 1821. The stones stand here to celebrate 200 years of peace between the United Kingdom and France. May our hearts be open to friendship and our arms reach across the sea to unite our two nations. Thank you. Simons, and I apologise again for getting the name wrong. I was tutored to begin with, but it went completely out of my head, so I'm sorry. Now, here's a name I can pronounce. I'd like to now call uh, Clive Charlton to step up to the podium. Uh, he's a time-served geographer lecturer at uh, Plymouth University. He's a co-curator of the exhibition that we had at the museum on the fallen emperor. And happily for us, he can also sing a bit. Uh, and he's going to render the popular traditional broadside ballad, the island, ballad, the island of St. Helena. <clears throat> Thank you very Can much, Nigel. Uh, story. Uh, uh, just before board. I start, I'm just going to explain why I've got a printed sheet and so have a lot of you. It's only partly because my memory is not that brilliant, uh, but also just to illustrate the way that uh, the, during the time of the Napoleonic Wars and well before that, one of the main <laughs> During the Napoleonic Wars, they were used as a propaganda tool. There were large numbers of them produced, often giving the most negative impressions of Napoleon, we have to say. Uh, some of them were poems, some of them were just tracts of text, others, though, were ballads, they were songs. Uh, but there were also some songs, some ballads that were produced that became increasingly sympathetic to Napoleon. And it's interesting that most of those that have survived, particularly those that tend to be sung quite a lot, are those that are more sympathetic to Napoleon's fate uh, as an exile in St. Helena. So that's what this one is about. Um, and there are just one or two words on it that I ought to explain, actually. You might wonder what it is. Um, there's a reference there to saint Cloud. Uh, near Paris, which was the place where Napoleon probably first seized power in the Brumaire coup uh, in 1799 when he became first consul. Uh, the song probably would render it as Saint Cloud for rhyming purposes, but it's Saint Cloud. Mount Diana, of course, is Diana Peak on Saint Helena, the highest point on Saint Helena. Uh, Louise is Marie Louise. Uh, who, of course, became Napoleon's wife between 1810 and 1814. Uh, and in this verse, of course, it sort of gives a rather very, uh, the sense that she was very, very sad about Napoleon's departure. Whether that was really the case is open to question. She'd probably gone back to her home territory in Austria by then, in fact. But the only other one, and if there's anybody here can help me with this, Lucana. I have no idea what that means, but it's in the song, uh, and this song has got all sorts of different variants, and it goes roughly like this. Now Boney's away from his warring and fight. Yeah. He has gone to a place where none can delight him. He may sit now and tell of the things he has seen all. While forlorn he does mourn on the Isle of St. Helena. No more in St. Cloud will he appear in great splendor. Nor step forth from the crowd like the great Alexander. He may look to the east, to the great Mount Diana. His heart full of woe on the Isle of St. Helena. The wild rushing waves round those shores, they're a-washing. 
On the white billows heave, on the rocks there are lashing. He may look o'er the main while he dreams of Lucana with his eyes on the waves that surround St. Helena. Louisa, she weeps from her husband is part and she dreams while she sleeps and awakes broken heart. There is none to console her, though many would be with her. What alone she does mourn when she thinks of Saint Helena. So all you with great wealth beware of ambition, for some twist of fate could soon change your condition. Be steadfast in time, what's to come change you cannot. For your race it may end on the Isle of Saint Helena. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Thank you, Clive. Thank you, everybody, for contributing today. Come over and get your first sight of the Napoleon Stones and Plaque. Thank you for coming along. Thank When you think about it, modern day history is moving incredibly quick. 200 years Napoleon was held in Plymouth uh, Sound, which is only like three generations of us being human. So what will happen during the next 200 years? And where will Plymouth be? This has been a Chris Summerfield Media Production 2015. You can contact me, sponsor me, support me through PayPal at ChristopherSummerfield at gmail.com. Thanks for watching this.